Hey everybody, this is Damon Moore. I am your presenter and I'm excited to bring you this presentation about Texas family law. Uh, this pre presentation is about the grounds of divorce. This is going to be very useful to you if you're planning to represent yourself uh, in a divorce. Uh, it will also be useful if you are going to hire an attorney to represent you and you want to understand some of the things that the lawyer is going to be thinking about as he or she helps you through your case. This presentation will also be useful to you if you're going to do some kind of alternative dispute resolution, such as mediation, arbitration, uh, collaborative law, uh, or, or some other type of ADR and you want to gain some knowledge before you hire the person that you want to hire. I own the law office of Damon Moore. I have an office in Austin, Texas. We handle family law matters throughout the state. Uh, you can obtain more information about me and the firm by checking out my website. That address is www.damonmoore.com. I want to share a little bit about myself so that you understand who I am. I've been representing clients in family law or domestic relations matters since 2005. I have represented hundreds of people in divorces, child custody disputes, termination of parental rights, and adoptions matters. I was also a mediator and chairman of the board of directors for the Austin Dispute Resolution Center which is believed to be Austin's uh, largest not-for-profit alternative dispute resolution organization. So I want you to know that you're in good hands uh, as we venture uh, into this presentation. Now, there are a number of other topics that I uh, discuss in other videos, talk about uh, divorce, conservatorship, child support, and property division uh, under the umbrella of Texas uh, basics. But this particular presentation is going to be about one thing, uh, the grounds for divorce in Texas. And at the end of the presentation, I'm going to give you a free gift that is sure to help you as you work through this challenging period in your life. If you have any questions, uh, then you're welcome to reach out to me. Uh, with all that said, uh, let's get started. So in Texas, uh, there are several reasons that you can claim you want a divorce, and they're generally going to fall into a no-fault versus fault-based uh, grounds. Uh, insupportability, living apart, confinement to a mental hospital, cruelty, adultery, uh, conviction of a felony, and abandonment. Uh, those are the areas that uh, we typically see. Let's talk first about insupportability. It's the most common. It's what we call a no-fault ground for divorce. And here's what the Texas Family Code says. On the petition of either party to a marriage, the court may grant a divorce without regard to fault if the marriage has become insupportable because of discord or conflict of personalities that destroys the legitimate ends of the marital relationship and prevents any reasonable expectation of reconciliation. A more simplistic way of saying it is that one of you just doesn't want to be married any longer. This is the easiest way to get a divorce, in my opinion, because you only have to prove that one of you no longer wants to be married. And the court will allow you to prove that through a spouse's testimony or through other evidence. Let's talk about living apart. The court may grant a divorce in favor of either spouse if the spouses have lived apart without uh, cohabitation for at least three years. Let's talk about uh, confinement to a mental hospital. The court may grant divorce in favor of one spouse if at the time the suit is filed, the other spouse has been confined to a mental hospital or private mental hospital in Texas or another state for at least three years, and it appears that the hospitalized spouse's mental disorder is of such a degree and nature that adjustment is unlikely 
or that if adjustment occurs, a relapse is probable. The three grounds that I mentioned here are considered no-fault grounds for divorce. Many of the other methods that I uh, will discuss require you to prove something about the other spouse. Uh, many of those other methods require you to prove that the other spouse is at fault. Now, you may be wondering why someone would want to obtain a divorce for uh, a fault-based reason if he or she can get a divorce more easily with a no-fault reason. Well, sometimes uh, a, a person will use a fault-based reason to obtain a larger share of the property division. I will uh, talk about the property division in another presentation, but for now, I think it's sufficient to say some judges will consider fault when they are dividing the marital estate. So uh, with that, let's take a look at uh, some other fault-based methods for getting a divorce. And let's start with cruelty. The court may grant a divorce in favor of one spouse if the other spouse is guilty of cruel treatment toward the complaining spouse. Here's what the Texas Family Code says. The court may grant a divorce in favor of uh, one spouse if the other spouse is guilty of cruel treatment toward the complaining spouse it's of a nature that renders further living together insupportable. Now, insupportable in this context means unendurable, insufferable, intolerable, and incapable of, of being born. The court is going to be looking for evidence of willful and persistent infliction of unnecessary suffering. Trivial matters or disagreements uh, will not be enough here. The suffering can be mental or physical, and uh, it can be one act or a combination of acts. And it can also include acts that occur after the parties separate. The court may also grant a divorce in favor of one spouse if the other spouse has committed adultery. It's important that I tell you the way the one Texas court defines uh, adultery. The voluntary sexual intercourse of a married person with one, not the husband or wife of the offender. It's also important that you know there are cases that say acts of adultery committed after a separation can support a judgment of divorce. What's important to see when it comes to adultery is the way that some judges treat adultery that occurs after the separation when someone is claiming adultery as a fault-based ground, but the parties have been separated for an extended period of time. Some judges seem to be less willing to grant divorce on adultery grounds when the parties have been separated for a long time before the final hearing those judges still grant divorces, but they seem to favor the no-fault ground for divorce. The evidence that is submitted has to be clear and positive. A mere suggestion or innuendo of adultery is not going to be enough. Let's talk about uh, felony convictions as a ground for divorce. The court may grant a divorce in favor of one spouse if during the marriage, the other spouse has been convicted of a felony, has been imprisoned for at least one year in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, a federal penitentiary, or the penitentiary of another state, and has not been pardoned. The court may not grant a divorce under this section of the family code against a spouse who was convicted on the testimony of another spouse. And finally, let's look at the fault-based ground for divorce called abandonment. The court may grant a divorce in favor of one spouse if the other spouse left the complaining spouse with the intention of abandonment and remained away for at least one year. 
An important key to the abandonment ground for divorce is that separation is voluntary. So, for example, a person who joins the military has voluntarily left or abandoned the marriage. But a person who is drafted into the military has not voluntarily left or abandoned the marriage. Also, the court cases suggest that you will not be able to claim abandonment if you are the person who requested or caused the separation. You won't be able to claim abandonment if the separation was through mutual agreement, and you won't be able to uh, claim abandonment if the departing spouse separated with the complaining spouse's consent. It's also important to note that the intent to abandon must also uh, be an intent not to return. And any return must be with the intent to cohabitate as spouses. Mere cohabitation for a few nights does not necessarily mean the abandonment claim is lost. So those are the grounds for divorce in Texas. Uh, if you think the information that I gave you is useful, then uh, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube page and click on the like button. And uh, don't forget to check out my ebook. It's called uh, The Checklist 50 Relationship Breakup Tips. I'm offering the checklist to you for no charge. Uh, this short ebook uh, provides useful things that you should consider doing. Uh, once you have decided to leave your relationship, a link to get that ebook is available in the notes, or you can send an email to me and request the ebook. Uh, the email address is damon at damonmore.com. So, again, the next steps subscribe, like my free relationship breakup tips guide, and if you need any more information, then feel free to uh, reach out to me. Again, my website address is damonmore.com. Bye for now.